everybody. Thank you so much for coming in today. Um, I'm Heather Riley, Senior Account Executive with Sony Pictures Digital Networks. Um, I know we've been trying for a while to get this meeting on the book, so really glad we can make it happen. And we have a nice packed room, which is always a good sign. So hopefully we have some Crackle fans here. And if you're not, then by the time I leave today, hopefully you will be. Um, before we get started, I would love to turn it over to you guys, just hear a little bit about what you've, um, what you're kind of challenged with back half of this year and, and going into 2016, um, what you've been doing, what's been working well for you, what's not, and maybe some kind of um, some holes that you're finding in the digital landscape or um, you know areas of interest that your, your clients are kind of challenging you to really dig into. Because um, as we go through this update today, I can kind of tailor and focus in on the, those areas. Um, and then hopefully coming out of today, we can set some clear follow-up to really dig in and identify ways um, that we could potentially partner again, you know, later this year and going into next year. Um, so if you guys could share a little bit about what you're doing, that would be super helpful. So thank you for that. That's really, you know, really helpful and always appreciate when you guys can take the time and share that. Um, so for those of you that aren't familiar with Crackle or you kind of just know us as the Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee website, um, you know, I want you to take that kind of uh, perception of us, put that to the side and really think of us as the TV network programming and creating great content, original content, acquired content, um, backed by Sony Pictures Television. So all of our content is 100% long form, so equate us with, you know, any of your linear networks, FEP players out there, um, but with the benefit of having a much lighter ad load than the FEPs and broadcast networks. Um, we're also completely free, so none of our content is behind a paywall. And we're available literally on every platform and device that you can think of. Um, so we're truly an over-the-top TV network. And we'll dig in a little bit deeper into what that means and where we are um, and how consumers are uh, viewing our content. Um, so, of course, you know, I'm here because we are ad-supported and we have a lot of really great ways that we can work with brands and do work with brands. And so ultimately, I want to share that with you. And again, um, based on what's important to you, kind of figure out um, best ways that we can partner together. So before I go kind of too deep into Crackle, um, I would love to share a video with you guys. I think it's a it's a really great Sony brand video that paints a nice picture of how Crackle fits into the larger Sony Pictures uh, landscape um, and the advantage that it gives us in creating and programming content. So take a look. So as you can see from the video, it's all about great content and great talent. Um, and that really does hold true for the entire Sony portfolio, um, whether it's as you saw Sony Pictures Television creating amazing hits like Blacklist and Shark Tank, um, Breaking Bad, which is one of the best shows of all time. Um, Crackle's really lucky to be part of that division. Um, it gives us the, you know, tap, allows us to tap into amazing talent and expertise. Um, and really as a result, Crackle's kind of spun out its own studios uh, division within there, creating shows like Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee and Sports Jeopardy, etc. Um, but even looking past that, if you, if you look at other divisions within Sony um, that we have access to and are able to tap into, you look at Sony Music, um, amazing artists and record labels that we can and do partner with. Um, and we're starting to do more and more with Sony Music. So you'll see, um, you'll see more from us in the you know coming months and, and year ahead. Um, but if music is something that is important to your client, if it's a, if it's a big pillar, um, we can absolutely kind of talk more strategically about ways to kind of um, partner up. And I can also share some of what we've done to date on the music side. Um, Sony Pictures Entertainment, our theatrical division, um, obviously a huge kind of monster unto itself. Uh, we need to find really creative ways to work with the studios on some of the movies. So. Um, we have James Bond, the new James Bond coming out later this fall, movies like Amazing Spider-Man. We've found really cool ways to partner with brands um, who maybe already have an alignment with the movie. We can kind of leverage that further, or they want to be aligned with the movie but can't necessarily, you know, pay the $10 million price tag to get in at the movie theater level. So a lot we can do there. Um, and then finally, PlayStation, which remains the number one gaming platform in the world, um, really just crushing the competition in the gaming space. And there's a ton to talk about there, so I'm actually um, planning to come back in in a couple of weeks so we can do more of a you know a deep dive. I mean, that's we could, again we could spend a whole meeting talking just PlayStation. Um, we've partnered recently with Spotify. We're launching original programming, 
and you know the way people are using their PlayStations has really evolved, and so it's not just kind of that um, teenage gamer sitting in their bedroom. It's now you know the families have taken the PlayStations and put them in the living room, and it's become much more of an entertainment device. So tons to talk about there as well. And again, we'll set something up. And if you guys have questions at the end, I'm, I'm happy to uh, to dig a little bit further into PlayStation. But for now, let's focus on Fraggle. Um, you know, I think one big uh, theme that you'll see here is that the TV landscape is really changing, and we're helping to change that, um, which is exciting. But what does it mean? So there's a few things that we know. Um, stat from Nielsen is that 40% of homes are now using a subscription VOD service, a la a Netflix. Um, that's great, we all love using those services, um, but for this room or for purposes, your client's purposes, they essentially have no advertising opportunity or very little. So it doesn't really help us, you know, in terms of help you guys as marketers in kind of getting a message about your products or brands in front of consumers. Secondly, another big factor kind of shaping the landscape is the rise of connected TV. So um, we've done a ton of deep dive research into uh, streaming habits, particularly in the home. And so we have really a whole study that we, um, we've done now for two years in a row. We've partnered with Magnet Associates. Um, so if you guys want more information, you want to talk more about that, or you have a client that maybe is focused on that area, um, we're happy to, to go a little bit deeper. But one of the big takeaways is that 62% um, of people that are cutting their cord are replacing that with connected devices. Um, Again, for us, it sets, up, sets us up really well because our content is 100% long form, and so consumers want to watch our content on the biggest screens in their home. So all of this really puts Crackle at a big advantage because we are an on-demand channel uh, with ads and a majority of our consumption on connected devices, as you can see here. So we have, I mean, huge footprint across CTV, and you name a box or a screen in your home or in your pocket, and we're available on it. Um, and I don't think, you know, we really don't have anyone else that kind of matches our footprint. Um, even from a year ago when I started, uh, I used to say, you know, if you look at the three different buckets here, online, mobile, and over the top, um, we were about a third, a third, a third in terms of our streams. And in, you know, about a year's time now, we've really jumped where it's roughly a quarter on desktop, about a quarter on mobile and then over half on connected devices. Again, that's the gaming consoles, the streaming consoles, and the smart TVs. Um, and, and again, it speaks to the fact that our content is all long form. Um, you know, it's 30-minute it's shows, hour shows, uh, feature-length films. Um, and again, people are, are wanting to watch that on the big screens in their home. Another big advantage that this puts us at is, um, you know, it's a huge buzzword and something I know we'll all challenge with, but is um, viewability. And so, you know, I'm sure that you guys talk about it every day. Um, it's almost a non-issue for us because so much of our viewing consumption is done on in-app uh, viewing. So when you look at mobile and connected TV, it's all app-based. Um, and even the MRC backs up, they say that um, if app viewing is done in-app, it's essentially 100% viewable because when you think about viewability, it's really a desktop issue. It's the ability to buy fraudulent traffic or people clicking out while an ad is on and watching something else. And so when you're in-app, there's really no way for anyone to do that. Um, so it sets us up really nicely, and we actually launched a, um, a partnership with Moat that we announced recently, uh, where they're actually going to be able to uh, third-party verify our viewability across all platforms. Um, so, you know, as you guys are challenged with viewability, you know, I think, uh, think of us and we can actually do a 100% viewable deal with you if that's something you want to do. Um, but we, you know, we're very fortunate in that so much of our consumption is done in app and we don't have to deal with those viewability issues that a lot of our competitors do. So all of this really translates into great numbers and I'm not a huge fan of just uh, throwing numbers up on the screen for the sake of showing stats. Um, but in our case, it's really telling. So. We have 27 million monthly uniques, and this is a very important part of my job is to educate you guys and make sure that you know the scale that we have. Uh, because unfortunately, because so much of our viewing is done over the top, as you saw, when you pull a report and comm score for, you know, to see our traffic, 
um, you're essentially only seeing our desktop traffic or depending on how you pull it, you may be able to get a read on our mobile audience. Um, but this is really a fraction again of, of our consumption. Um, so for us, for me, it's my job to you know, let you know the scale that we have that you're not seeing when you're just pulling a ranker. Um, because our content is all long form, we see really great um, time spent, so we're at about three, over 300 minutes per visitor per month, and that translates into really great engagement and completion rate metrics for clients. So um, across the board, across all platforms, we're consistently over 90%, but when you look specifically at mobile and over the top in-app, um, we're at an average of about 95% completion rate, um, and I've seen it spike to essentially 100%. So hopefully that's something you guys will see when you start running with us. Um, but you know, I uh, when I first started working here and I would see those completion rate numbers, I thought that something had to be wrong. Um, but it's uh, it's just it's a result of the long form engaging content that we have, and, and people really you know again they're sitting in their living room, they're leaning in to watch a show and they're just staying tuned for the entire show episode. Um, so again, translates into great metrics for you guys. So you can see where our audience is, um, how big they are, but who are they? And this is something we've been focusing on now um, for the past year is really kind of digging into who they are. And they really are the sprint target. Um, they're the desirable millennial young adults um, building their careers. Um, they're really in sort of that phase of their lives where they are um, you know, trying to build a life for themselves. And we know that they're inherently tech savvy um, because of how they're watching us, again, watching us on connected devices and over the top devices. Um, so they're really that really desirable audience that's hard to reach in a lot of places. Uh, they love to stream content, so they may not necessarily be watching linear TV all the time. So we have that audience. Um, and because we know who they are, we can program to them. And so this is a really important distinction between Crackle and a lot of our competitors and some of the video aggregators out there. You know, we are a network with a very defined voice um, and we're programming and curating content to a defined audience, um, you know, just like an FX or an AMC does. So we're not just aggregating a ton of video and throwing it out there and, and it's for everybody. It's really um, every month we have about 1600 hours of programming and that gets refreshed every month. Um, and again, because we're, we're programming and curating. Um, so, you know, we'll never have 100,000 hours of content at any given time because it's everything is done with a purpose. Um, so, you know, when we're uh, putting movies out there, we're actually competing in the same windows as, as FX and some of the cable networks. So the content, the acquired content that we have is just as relevant as what you would see on cable TV. Um, and so we're really taking that positioning as a TV network one step further into a new consumer experience. Um, we're bringing together the best of linear TV and on demand. And so this is really exciting for us. Um, we're launching a new consumer experience this summer, um, starting with Roku. So I have a demo that I'll show you in a minute. Um, but the idea here is that if you think about the on demand experience now, not just Crackle, but kind of on demand in general, Right now, it's a very flat experience until you get to the content that you want. So if you think about it, you're scrolling through very text-driven menu guides. It can be kind of clunky. Um, and again, until you find what you want to watch, you're just sort of sitting there navigating through. That's all changing um, for us. We are launching kind of an always-on experience. And so starting this summer, when you launch your Crackle app, again, starting on Roku, and we'll be rolling it out onto other devices, but the second that you turn on your Crackle app, you'll be instantly entertained with content. So it'll be like linear TV where you turn on the channel and something's playing, um, but you'll have the choice and control of on demand. So um, we're doing it in sort of a day parted approach. So in the morning you might turn on Crackle and it may be comedians and cars getting coffee. In the afternoon it might be um, Sports Jeopardy so you can play along at lunch. And in the evening it might be a Crackle original movie or another prime time movie that we have in our lineup that month. Um, you'll be able to either watch that content from the point that it's programmed at to you, you'll be able to go into it and go back to the beginning, um, or you'll just be able to continue surfing and navigating to what you want to find. So again, it's really bringing together the best of linear TV and on demand. Um, and we think it's a game changer. You know, again, right now it's a very static experience and on demand, and this is so much more dynamic 
And it's also a really great way for us to um, give existing Crackle users a taste of other programming on Crackle. So we may have an, you know, a fan that comes to us just for Sports Jeopardy every Wednesday to see a new episode. Um, but now they've come to Crackle and we're programming Dead Rising, which is uh, an original movie that we just launched off the highly successful video game franchise. Maybe they're a gamer, they had no idea we released this movie, and now they're going to watch something else with us, and now they're going to expand their portfolio of shows that they watch with Crackle. So we really see this as a win-win um, you know, for us, for the consumer, and, and for you guys, because it is truly a, a brand new experience in on-demand viewing. So here's a quick uh, demo of what this looks like. Um, there's no sound here, so I'll kind of talk you through what you're seeing, um, but this is the experience that you, similar experience with what you'll see in Roku. And then as you can imagine, it's a big undertaking because we have to work with every individual platform. So we have to work with PlayStation and Xbox and the smart TVs to roll out this consumer experience. Um, Roku, we have a lot of scale on Roku and they're a very great, they're a very easy partner to work with. Um, so we started with them, but you'll start to see this roll out again across all of our platforms. So hopefully you guys, I mean, you're all nodding your heads. It's like you, you know, you get it and you, um, and you think it's great. And so um, for those of you that have Roku at home, you'll start to see that. And we'll keep you updated as we launch on other platforms. Um, but we're really excited about it. And so, you know, all of this, I think, is, you know, we can agree. It's all great information. Um, but what are the ways that we can work with you guys and your brands? And so there's a number of ways we can work with brands. Um, I like to talk about the most fun way first, and that's integrating your brands through our original programming. So, you know, again, you might know us for Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, which helped put Crackle on the map. Um, and hopefully you know us for some of our other massive hits as of late, such as Sports Jeopardy or Joe Dirt 2 that we just launched. Um, but you'll see we continue to work with top talent. And Sony corporately continues to invest in us and our original programming. So the big advantage that we have is that we are both the studio and the network, meaning we can bring your brands on board really early on in the process and integrate you. So we can literally take your brand from script to screen and make it one seamless process for you. Um, you know, whether it's a product placement, kind of just product integration into a series, um, or a custom storyline or a piece of derivative content. There are a number of ways that we can do this. Um, and there are a number of ways that we have done this with other partners. So I have a, um, a video that I can share and it will show you some really great examples. You can take note again of, of some areas um, that we've partnered with brands, really brands across every category. Um, and the opportunities here are endless. And then as we go through uh, some of our other originals, I'll kind of show you some examples specific to shows that uh, ways that we've brought brands to life. So as you can see from the video, you know, we really get brands involved early on in the process, again, because we are the studio and the network, and so there's no kind of third parties that we need to deal with. Um, so one cool thing that we're able to do as a result of that is, you know, for, for, the, for a brand that's really interested in a specific show, um, we're able to storyboard out what your brand could look like in a show. And so, you know, we're not doing this for every single RFP that comes in the door. It's, you know, if we're sitting here today and there are shows that we're talking about and you tell me, oh my God, this show is great. We can see our brand in it. Our client loves it. We can come back and show you guys some ways that we can work the brand in. And I think, you know, when you're able to bring something to life visually like that, it really helps, um, it helps a client wrap their head around how they can see their brand. So, that's uh, just something to kind of keep in mind as you guys are talking to your clients about specific shows with us. Um, so I want to talk about a few shows that are returning because, you know, I think every year at the new fronts and upfronts, uh, a lot of people get up on stage and announce a lot of shows. A lot of them, you know, never see the light of day or some of them run for a few episodes and then get canceled midway through the season. Um, and that goes for cable, broadcast, etc. But we've really had a great track record of renewing shows and green lighting shows that end up being a great success. So Comedians of Cars Getting Coffee, um, you know, the one that you probably know us for really um, is our flagship series. Sort of a blessing and a curse, we always say, because um, a really good example here of a brand that signed on, on you know, uh, early on is Acura. Um, Acura signed on to Comedians and Cars at Inception. They get right of first refusal every time we renew the season and they sign on every 
single season because they, you know, it's been such a success for them. Um, I say a blessing and a curse because it's also a show that we know if Acura ever pulled out of that the floodgates would open and then every brand under the sun would want to work with us. But that said, it still remains a really great promotional platform for us. Obviously, having Jerry as part of the network is great. Um, and again, it serves as a really good example of the programming and level of talent that we're working with. Another show that um, you know, we stood up on stage at last year's New Front and announced that we greenlit 52 episodes out of the gate uh, is Sports Jeopardy. And Sports Jeopardy has just been a runaway hit for us. Um, you know, we knew we had a pretty winning formula with the legendary Dan Patrick um, and the, the Jeopardy brand is, is uh, part of Sony Pictures Television. Um, but it really was something new that hadn't been done before, you know, a, a, a game show in the over-the-top space um, and to green light a whole season, you know, it was a pretty bold move. But um, we are getting close to wrapping up season one. We're heading into the championship series, and we've already seen 10 million streams to date um, in under a year. So it's just been a runaway success. Um, Dan is amazing. He promotes the show on his radio show. Um, you know, he's out there. He's got such a great personality and a really good rapport with the audience, um, with the contestants. And so we're really excited to have, you know, to keep him on board. So for those of you that haven't seen it, I urge you to watch a few episodes. Um, you'll get hooked, and particularly sports fans. Um, I'm going to share a quick clip with you that shows some brand integrations. Uh, we've had a lot of fun with brands in this show because it's sports. There's a lot of natural alignments. We can take a lot of liberties with brands. Um, so you'll notice throughout the clip here um, ways that we've partnered with brands such as Buffalo Wild Wings and Geico. And then at the end, there's a great clip um, of a kind of a derivative piece of vignette that we created for Denny's using their mascots. So take a look at that. And then moving on, you may have heard um, some press about our launch of Joe Dirt 2. Um, so this is another one uh, actually at our upcoming presentation this year. David Spade and Brittany Daniel stood on stage and announced that we were releasing Joe Dirt 2. Um, and Brittany Daniel made a comment that fans worldwide have been waiting for this. And so we got some, you know, some laughs, some snickers. Um, but I have to say, we released the trailer. Uh, and almost overnight, we had a half a million streams. So we knew that we really had something there. And now we are um, just about a week and a half in, and we've already cracked the million streams mark. So we thought it would do well, but it's actually done even better than we expected. Um, and again, this is where the advantage uh, comes in that we're backed by Sony Pictures Television. So. Um, you know, we have the expertise that's that's sitting at the studio saying, you know, no, we think this will be a hit. Um, and and so we've been, you know, we've been really lucky with this one. And um, I would say this is another really good example of brand integration. So if you watch the movie, um, we have Auto Trader integrated throughout that you'll notice. And we also released this for the first two weeks as a limited commercial interruption experience. And Arby's signed on as kind of the presenting sponsor. So um, you know, again, an example of cool ways that we can bring brands to life through our original programming. So if you haven't seen it, check out Do Dirt 2. Switching gears quite a bit, um, really uh, on the other end of the spectrum, um, I want to share with you guys the show that I'm most excited about. Um, this is really going to be our biggest planned launch to date. This will be part of more. It will be our first one-hour original drama series. Um, starring Dennis Quaid, Kate Bosworth, and Christian Cook. Um, the series delves into the dark underbelly of the big New York City auction house world, a la Christie's. Um, really interesting, something that hasn't, you know, a topic that hasn't really been um, addressed or, uh, you know, woven into a show before on, on any channel. Um, really exciting. Christian Cook actually was up for the... Uh, lead in Fifty Shades of Grey, and uh, I think when you see him, you'll agree that he's, um, he may have been a better choice, um, but he's an up-and-coming actor, and then for any of you Princess Bride fans, you'll also notice Carrie Elway's, um, but you'll notice just the level of production. Um, this is, you know, we're looking at this as sort of our house of cards or um, HBO-esque quality type of a show. Um, I know for me, this is, I plan for this to be my binge watch show when I'm home on maternity leave in November. Um, we're about wrapping up filming, but we have a few episodes left, so there's still opportunity for brand integration um, in the, you know, scripted into the series. 
but beyond that, there's tons of other opportunities as well. So, um, so we'd love to talk to you guys after you watch the trailer a little bit more about this. Cool. So that that one is, we're so excited about that one. Um, again, before I talk about Supermansion with Arctic Moore, you're going to see a ton of PR, um, a ton of marketing support behind that one, and and so um, you know I think this is going to be our our big Q4 hit. Um, also coming in Q4, again, uh, on the other end of the spectrum, um, but it goes to show the breadth of the programming that we have. Um, I know that your brand is content sensitive, so this may not be a fit from that perspective, but I want to share it with you guys. One, because I think you'll find it hilarious. Uh, two, you're going to definitely hear about it, read about it um, once it launches. You know, it'll be very buzzworthy. But three, it also gives another really great example of the level of talent that we're working with. And the level of talent that we're bringing to Crackle. Um, so Supermansion is was actually an Adult Swim pilot contest winner a couple of years ago um, that we've now taken on and, and greenlit as a series. It's from the creators of Robot Chicken, so Seth Green um, and those guys, and it's also being produced by Brian Cranston, who is going to be the um, he's the lead character's voiceover. So the show is um, they call it uh, stop motion, and it's sort of like a claymation. The best way that I can describe it, and I'll show you a video because the video will do a better job, um, but it's essentially real world meets the Avengers with some South Park thrown in. So think of a, a house of these kind of washed up superheroes um, and sort of the craziness that ensues and they're all completely over the top and, and super edgy. Um, and so each episode will have different guest stars that are doing different voiceovers. So um, you'll see in the video some of the celebrities that will have voice doing voiceovers in the series. So take a look at this. I know, so that one looks really funny. Um, we're excited about that. So that'll be out in November. Um, we don't have an exact launch date yet, but I will, uh, as soon as we do, I'll share that with you guys. I know uh, I can see that you, some of you in the room look like you actually want to uh, watch it and will become a fan of that show. So switching gears, um, you know, again, our original programming is really the backbone of what we do and, and the, again, the most fun way that we can bring brands into our portfolio. But, um, you know, not every brand kind of, that's not what gets every brand excited. Um, a lot of brands are more kind of tactical and looking for the best targeting and ad solutions. Um, we have that too. So because of our foothold in the over the top and connected TV space, um, we've really been challenging our partners, Nielsen, Comscore, et cetera, to step up and find ways to provide third-party reporting and validation um, in connected TV and over the top. So as a result, we're actually going to be the first ones, and I'll specifically speak to Comscore because I know your agency is a Comscore agency, um, but we will be the first to launch connected TV VCE validation. We're doing that this summer. We're actually doing it with um, launching with Gillette, so a brand right here at SMG. Um, you know, this is, for us, it's a game changer because up until now, VCE was only available on desktop. It just launched on mobile, but there's a lot of rules about um, the number of impressions you have to run on a certain platform in order to be able to put a guarantee against it. This is a game changer because it now opens up, as you saw from our distribution slide, it opens up that whole, you know, more than half of our audience. Um, so before this, if you were buying us on demographic, you were really missing our most valuable audience, which was that over-the-top audience. Um, so that's, again, that's changing um, this summer, so we're psyched about that. And uh, we'd love to talk to you guys a little bit more about that. Um, we're also making the same strides with Nielsen on the OCR front. Um, your agencies uh, can focus more on Nielsen's OCR product. Um, and then the biggest thing that we are launching um, to date in terms of targeting is our partnership with Adobe. And so you've probably read a lot about Adobe Primetime, um, so we're partnering with Adobe and their data management platform to really be able to um, hone in on the first party data that we've collected about our users and then being able to target and post out on that. So there's a number of ways that we'll be able to work with our DMP, um, with the Adobe DMP. The first is with first party data. So we've been working to collect user registration data across all of our um, devices. So. If you go to your Roku and you haven't um, been prompted yet, you would be prompted to sign in with your email address, your gender, um, your age, etc. So we're starting to collect all of that data. We'll then be able to run that through Adobe's DMP 
um, we can secondarily also bump up. So if you have your own data segments through Axiom or, or some of those other partners, um, we'll actually be able to bump up your segments with our segments and more accurately target them. Um, and then on, it will also help us on third parties. So because we know exactly who our audience is, it will help us with the Comscore VCE and, and really um, kind of minimizing any waste that we would normally see in trying to match up a demographic. Um, so we're really excited about this. We'd love to talk to you guys a little bit more about what that means and, and um, what you might have in place already and ways that we can partner together here. Um, so again, we're, we've been collecting the data. We're starting to slowly roll it out. It's a big undertaking, but I would say that by you know early 2016, we'll be able to really kind of transact on this, um, maybe even sooner if it's something that you feel like would really help um, you know, secure a partnership. And then finally, something that we talked about in our upfront presentation um, is this notion of incremental reach, which I think is really important, and we've been talking to a lot of the TV teams here about it. Um, but again, you know, in following the theme of thinking of Crackle as a TV network, you know, when we talk to TV teams, they agree we kind of fit into the TV network mold, but you can't buy us on a GRP. That's about to change. Um, we've been working with Nielsen for quite a while now to really prove out a story of incremental reach on top of linear TV. So we're not saying don't invest in television, keep investing in television. Um, but there reaches a point of saturation in TV buying where you're spending potentially your last, let's say, five to ten million dollars in TV advertising to get maybe a half or one incremental reach point at which point you're also running into frequency issues. Um, so what we've done is we've looked at a bunch of different networks and shows specifically. And with Nielsen, we've been able to prove out kind of what kind of lift you would see if you take a certain amount of your investment that you would be spending on TV and invest it in Crackle, specifically Crackle connected TV. Um, so this is something if you guys, you know, if this is an area of interest for you, or if there, again, if there's somebody specific on the team that this would really kind of resonate with. Um, we would love to come back in, even potentially bring in Nielsen and dig a little bit deeper into some of the specific networks and shows that we looked at. Um, but, you know, I think this is, again, this is a real game changer in terms of how we'll be able to sell um, and, and how we're positioning ourselves in the TV landscape. So I hope that was a, you know, helpful update for you guys. Um, I appreciate the questions. I appreciate, you know, the, um, the feedback. Um, Again, you know, as we look across the portfolio, there's a lot more that we can talk about. You know, we, uh, we covered a lot with Crackle today, but I want to set up some time to really talk about um, what could work specifically for you. Um, I'm going to come back in. We'll talk PlayStation again. I think PlayStation could be an amazing fit, especially given that it's sort of broadened out to be a little bit more entertainment driven than just gaming endemic, um, which you probably thought of us as before. Um, and then PlayStation View and um, happy to talk to you guys a little bit more about this. You've probably read a lot about it in the trades, but um, this is our over-the-top streaming TV service available through your PlayStation. Um, very similar, but better to, uh, versus what Sling is doing. Um, you know, we have all of the major cable networks and almost all of the broadcast networks signed up. Um, Disney slash ABC is the one outlier, but we'll have them locked on soon. Um, and then that'll really set us apart from Sling. But it's a monthly subscri subscription, so there's no major commitment the way there is with um, cable. And it's all cloud-based, so you don't have to worry about your DVR getting filled up because all of the content is in the cloud. So there's a lot to talk about there. This one I know is really buzzworthy. A lot of clients are asking questions. So you know, use me if clients are asking questions about view, um, or if they're asking questions in general about over-the-top TV viewing. Um, please you know, think of us as, as a resource. And I think we can really help educate you guys and your clients in the space because um, everything we do is so entrenched in this space. Um, so hopefully, again, this is a good update on really the, the product changes that we're putting out there, the programming and the targeting solutions. Um, and this should set us up hopefully for some success in the back half of this year and going into next year. So thank you guys.